present value is equal to the base cost NPV plus the present value of the interest savings. We have interest savings, interest savings plus the present value of the tax shield minus the present value of issue, issue cost, the present value of issue cost. This is, this is a formula for N APV for this question because we have savings as we read in uh, the second paragraph that there will be a subsidized loan of 8 million out of the total. This will cost 2% below the company's normal cost. That's a saving. So we are going to add this saving to the base cost. So this will be the formula. So we are first of all going to calculate the base cost. Then we'll have a working for the present value of interest savings. We'll have a working for the present value of the tax shield and the working for the present value of issue costs. So we're going to have workings. Working one is a NPV. Best cost NPV. We know candidate that NPV is equal to the present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows. So to determine the base cost, the base cost NPV, we get the difference of the present value cash inflows and the present value cash outflows. Reading from this question, candidates, you can see in the third paragraph, there are two cash inflows. There are two cash inflows. Two cash inflows. The first one is that uh, we read that the investment is expected to generate a pre-tax cash inflow. Inflow. That is an inflow. Underline the word inflow. A net cash inflow. Pre-tax cash inflow. Pre-tax cash inflow of approximately 14 million shillings. That means that the 14 million shillings is inclusive of the tax. And the 14 million will be received for a period of 10 years. So that's the period. So that's the first cash inflow. The second cash inflow is the residue value at the end of the 10 year period, which will be 15 million after tax. So after the 10 million, uh, after the 10 years, there'll be a residue value which will be received after 10 years, 15 million after tax. So the 15 million is after tax. So we're going to get the present value of the two inflows. The first one is a 14 million. This is 14 million. This 14 million is inclusive of, inclusive of tax. So we remove the tax, multiply by 0 0.7. times the present value annuity factor. This is the interest that will be received uh, uh, annually, uniformly. It's an annuity. So we multiply by the rate times the 10 years. We don't know the rate, but we know the years. This is the first inflow. The second inflow is, a, is a, the lump sum, the residue of 15 million, 15 million. This is a lump sum that we received after 10 years. So we multiply by the uh, present value interest factor. We don't know the rate, but we know the years. So these two are the inflows, 10 years. 
minus the cash present value of cash outflow. The present value of the cash out outflow is the 48 million shillings, which will be financed as shown in the question. So minus 48 million. So there are two cash inflows and one outflow. Now, candidates, we do not have the discounting factor. So we're going to have a, another working within this working to determine the discounting rate, not factor, but the rate, the discounting rate. We do not have it. So we're going to have a formula. Uh, we will use the weighted average cost of capital, the weighted, weighted average cost of capital, which we know can be uh, calculated by adding the risk-free rate plus the, um, the, the, levered, the levered beta, the levered, uh, the unlevered beta times market return minus RF, the unlevered beta. We do not have the unlevered beta. But from the question you can see, um, we do not have the unlevered beta. Do we have it? No. But we have the average equity beta in the tourism industry is 1.2%. And the average gearing is 50% equity and 50% debt by market value. So we need to calculate the, um, the, the unlevered beta. The unlevered beta, unlevered beta, unlevered beta, we know is equal to the, the levered beta we divide by one plus, plus debt equity ratio, debt equity ratio, all right? One plus the debt equity ratio times one minus T. This will give us the unlevered beta, okay? Which will enable us to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. And the levered beta from the question, we are calculating the unlevered beta. From the question, we have the levered beta. Uh, not number two, the average equity beta in the tourism industry is 1.2. So this is 1.2 divided by one plus the debt equity ratio, the debt equity ratio and the averaging debt equity ratio is 50 equity 50 debt 50 which is 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 times 1 minus t 0 0.7 that will be the unlevered beta which is equal to 1.2 divide 1.7 this is equal to 0 0.0 0 0 0.706 that is the unlevered beta which will help us calculate the weighted average cost of capital the risk free rate the risk-free rate is, uh, is it 5.5? .5? Yes, 5.5, 5 5.5% 5 .5 plus the, the unlevered beta, 0 0.706 into risk. Uh, the, the market return is 12%, 12% minus 5.5%. This is equal to? 
plus 0 0.706 into 12 minus 5.5 this is equivalent to 10 percent so the weighted average cost of capital is 10 percent so this 10 percent is uh, the discounting rate so i'm going to have the discounting rate there of 10 percent mm, so i have uh, 14 million times 0.7 9.8 million times times P V A F ten percent ten years plus fifteen million times P V I F ten percent 10 years minus 48. So 9.8 million times. I read the factor, this factor from the table. Annuity. This is an annuity. This annuity, 10 years, 10%. 10 years. 10 percent uh, this is equal to 9.8 million times 10 years 10 percent 10 years 10 percent 6.1446 yes the annuity plus 15 million the lump sum 10 years, yeah, 10 years, 10, 10 years, 10, this is uh, 3855 minus 48 million, which is equal to, which is equal to 9.8 million times 6.1. 6.1446 plus 15 million times 0.3855 minus 48 million. This is equal to 17 million. 999,580. So this is the best cost NPV. The best cost NPV is 17,999,580. That's the first working, working one. Best cost NPV, that is it. Then we have the second working to calculate.